This is a model of the respiratory system going from very large scale down to very small scale. I'm going to cover all the, the, top, the terms from page 105, or at least most of them. I'm probably going to hit some other things that we covered in the, in the digestive system too, but we'll just see where we go. So your main nasal openings are the nostrils or nares, N-A-R-E-S. Uh, the accessory opening here is the mouth. Uh, we use the mouth because we talk a lot, as I'm doing right now, so we vocalize out of the mouth. But the nasal cavity is the main entryway for air. Uh, it's got some things going for it. It's got a muc mucosal lining. It's got uh, hairs in it to catch particulate matters, matter. It's got these um, folds in the wall. These are called conchae, and they're separate bones in, in the nasal cavity. And they, they along with the uh, ethmoid bone, add a lot of surface area in there to the nasal cavity. So you uh, warm up the air, you filter the air, you trap particulate matters, uh, particulate matter from the air. And it also acts as a resonance chamber so that when you talk, I kind of sound nasally anyway, but when I talk with my nose closed, and it sounds even worse. <clears throat> so you breathe in through here, uh, you make your way back to the, what you'd call the nasopharynx, which is in this region. Uh, this is the hard palate, soft palate. That's the uvula at the end there. And the soft palate will flap up to close off the nasal passage when you swallow. We get to the back of the mouth where we are in the oropharynx. Then we get to the sort of just above the larynx, and this is the laryngopharynx. Now, when you uh, are just going, you know, you're, you're not eating, the air is going to go naturally down this, this trachea. So it's going to go into this opening, this glottis. The opening to your trachea is called your glottis. Ergo, this thing is called the epiglottis, which closes over the glottis when you swallow. So the food can go down this tube, which is the esophagus. But we're breathing, so air comes in, goes in here through the uh, entrance to the trachea, which is surrounded by a bunch of cartilages that make up the uh, larynx. The larynx is basically right in this region. And you can see that there is a little fold right here, which represents the vocal cords, which you find there. And that's what I'm using to make these sounds right now. Ho, 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 that's vocal cords. Now we go down into the trachea, which is ringed with hyaline cartilage. This location is called, it's, they call it respiratory cartilage because of its location in the respiratory system. But the type of cartilage is uh, hyaline cartilage. Uh, you get down here where the branching point is, and you've got what they call primary bronchi right here. So this is a primary bronchus, and then after they divide, it's these are secondary bronchi, and then after they divide, they're tertiary bronchi, not because there's three of them, but the, the third fork. Uh, and they divide, and they divide, and they divide down in here into the lungs. So this represents a single lung within one of the pleural cavities, and this space right here down here. This space right here represents that pleural cavity. So the actual space is the pleural cavity with the, uh, the membranes that line the two surfaces being the visceral serosa or uh, visceral pleura, because it's in the lungs, that lines the actual lung, and then the parietal serosa or parietal pleura, which lines the uh, diaphragm and the um, the inside of the, the ribs. Uh, when we get down to the microscopic scale over here, oh, I should point one more thing out. These are intercostal muscles right there, uh, the external intercostals, and the diaphragm represented by this tan thing here. The external intercostals and the diaphragm are the muscles that you contract to inspire, to breathe in. And if you just relax, you'll expire, so it's passive expiration under most circumstances with active inspiration. If you want to forced expire, if you want to blow out the candles in your birthday cake, you blow like that and you're going to use the internal intercostals as well as maybe some abdominal muscles to, to push that air out. <clears throat> now, if you really want to take a super deep breath, you can access uh, a couple of extra muscles like the pectoralis group and the uh, sternocleidomastoid but you'd really have to do one of those blow your, you know, blow the, uh, the house down wolf inspirations to use those. All right, let's move over here to this uh, alveolar sac. What we have here is a, a 
terminal bronchus probably. So this is a bron uh, I'm sorry, terminal bronchiole. I misspoke. Terminal bronchiole, which once you get into the area of this alveolar sac, you're going to have what are called respiratory bronchioles. Respiratory bronchioles are really where you first pick up the uh, the respiratory section of your, uh, the part that exchanges gases of your respiratory system. Everything else above there, all this stuff is all called conducting zone until you get down here, in which case you're in the respiratory zone. Uh, this You can think of this whole big bunch of grapes here as an alveolar sac. Individual alveolus would be uh, indicated by these, each one of these little grapes. So a grape is an alveolus, the whole bunch is an alveolar sac. Uh, the bronchial ends and becomes what's called an alveolar duct, which kind of go, is a through, th through thoroughfare um, within this uh, bunch of alveoli here. So if you really were to isolate this tube right down the middle, you could call that an alveolar duct, but it's kind of just hard to pinpoint. You can see these capillary beds that are there to exchange gases. You're here to, they're here, the blue blood is coming into the lungs and it becomes oxygenated. So this right here, this blue thing is a, are branches of your pulmonary artery. This is the blood vessel that went away from your heart to your lungs. Once it gets oxygenated, it's gonna return through that pulmonary vein back to the left atrium, left ventricle, and then out to your body as it's been all juiced up with oxygen. That is it.